Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining our resource panel virtually. I mean, nothing can stop this stuff going on. And uh, we're, this is probably be part one because we are not going to get through everything that we have on the agenda. So if you're listening, if you are a guest, stay muted, but in the comment section, put your comments or your questions because we can all see them and we can answer them either later at the end or if it's appropriate during the time. So first I wanna introduce everybody and we're going in order of what I wrote down. You can't see that, but first we have Mr. Andrew. Andrew is, Hi. there he is over there, my man. We met because we grew up in the same town. I live in the town he grew up in. This is what social media does, brings people together. But he is a United States Marine Corps vet and he is a Reverend Warriors Regional Coordinator for Tennessee. Did I get yes, that right? Yes, ma'am. Yes? Hi, how are you guys? And next what up? is Malachi Gaskin. He is US Army veteran, Warriors Gardener. He's the Hoorah. author. Gardner and founder of War Fight Gardens. There he is. He's yes, chilling out in the car. <laughs> I just got off work, so I'm heading to the house. <laughs> uh, and next we have the beautiful Sarah Lee. She oh is yeah. Look, look, look. Yeah, she's look. internet or actually not internet, but uh, power on and off. But she is here. She made it. I knew it. I was like, I, you, I got you. Got this. You're going to be yeah. here. Army leads the way. <laughs> Stops her. She is the founder of Waypoint Vets, Inc. and owner of Sarah Lee Photography. Yes. Hi, everybody. Beautiful Hi, Sarah. Hey. <laughs> what up? What's up? <laughs> and next is Corey Kemper. He is the executive director of CommuniServe, and he is alive because he's been homeschooling his children. Right. So, yeah. dear heavens, thank you for you know staying alive and being here today. Happy to be here <laughs> with no kids in my house. It's awesome. Uh, and my partner in crime, Joyce, she is out making moolah because she's a licensed massage therapist, and they are shut down in Florida. So she is making things happen in a different way. Once you get to know her, you'll realize she's a shaker and a mover. She is a kind of woman. So if she can make it, she'll pop in. If not, next time. So we're gonna get right into it. Um, and this one, I, oh, when Joyce and I were talking about, you know, military outreach and do we wanna change the panel? Does it need to be changed because everything going on? I'm like, frig, no, this is exactly perfect because the relevance of forced quarantine and self-quarantine or forced isolation and self-isolation is like more prevalent now than I think ever. So I want to, yeah. um, you know, you can raise your hand because I don't want us to all talk over each other because if you're like me, Italian, although I talk with my hands, so don't think <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> I'm raising my hand. I don't want us all to talk um, mm. all at once. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so actually, I'm going to pick someone. I'm picking Sarah. What do you think? Like, let's start there. What has this, has this like triggered anything or brought anything? Or where do you feel of the similarities, difference, relevance in the whole thing? As far as the isolation and, and quarantine, I mean, yeah, I um, personally went through quite a period of, of isolation. Um, which I've been kind of a little more vocal about in the past couple of years as I've been trying to eliminate that part of my part of my persona in uh, you know the behind the scenes part Sarah that um, you know people haven't really met you know I was staying at home for weeks at a time um, voluntarily and this went on for about six years um, about three years ago I kind of broke out of that cycle but um just being home for the last two weeks it, it's felt like a cakewalk for me just because I've been um, but but at the same time I'm thinking to myself my god I I um, willingly did this at one point you know it's it's so different this time because you you want the interaction especially once you've broken out of a cycle like that and have made it a point to start and, and 
more involved and then to have um, events canceled, people, you can no longer see them, things you've been looking forward to. Because um, having something to look forward to is so key for, for vets and probably everybody, I'm sure. Because um, you don't think about the end so much when you have something coming up, you know, something you're excited about. So uh, having those things taken away uh, all of a sudden, um, the big difference this time is that it is completely necessary. Something that's still pretty unknown and, and global um, so there is that part of it where it's like, you know, I, I should be doing this. I feel good about doing this this time instead of that sh aspect of shame and, and self-hate and, and things like that. Like you feel like you're doing your part by staying away, you know, part of the solution and, and such. So, Yeah. Is there any, like, does anybody feel any, I don't know why this came to me, any guilt about, even though you're, it's a, like a forced isolation isolation being away but does it trigger kind of any guilt like I should be doing something other than not even though like you said Sarah you're doing the right thing it's what you should be but I feel like there's a something like that going on does anyone uh, <clears throat> Malakas you want to you want to go ahead oh you're muted Malakas. Yeah, I believe I I oh, muted him because I could hear his car go Malakas oh, oh. oh. Sorry about that. Uh, awkward. Um, so yeah. So what I've noticed is that we have this um, we have this group that is sitting at home, and you know the the DOD just sent out an email yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Was here yesterday, the day before. You know, looking for veterans to reenlist to come back to go work on the front lines of the COVID. Right. Specifically looking for people that had experience in that medical arena, right? So your 68 whiskeys, your corpsmen, your you know your your LPNs and your nurses and all of that. Um, and you had a lot of like I actually when I got the letter because I'm a, you know, I'm a former combat medic, I'm a 68 whiskey, and when I got the letter, I was like I'm 100% permanent total. I couldn't go back if I wanted to, you know. And then I I showed it to my wife as a joke, and she looks at me and she goes no. Because she knew, you know what I mean? <laughs> she knew, you know what I mean? But they, yeah, there's a guilt because, like, you know, I mean, I got out of the Army in 03 right when OIF was kicking off. And for three years before I went back in the Army, I felt every day I was guilty about not deploying with my guys, you know? And then when I came back in, and so there's a lot of this where we know that we could probably be making a difference. And instead of making a difference where we are, we're wanting to be on a part of something bigger because it's what we were used to. And we've lost that sense of identity because we're no longer part of that larger echelon, you know, the Marine Corps, the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, and all that. And so now we don't, we don't see that small element as it was important, but it's actually just as important if we could be influencing the movers and the shakers and the people that need the healing in those local communities, that we could be making a bigger impact there because it would be more lasting because we have a smaller footprint and we're going to have more eyes on what we're doing. So I don't personally have the guilt of I'm not helping because I'm doing what I can in my community. Um, because we all know, I mean, the quarantine is a self quarantine. Like we're not mandated to stay in our house by law. Like Davidson County, I get that. Like in Nashville, I, you guys are on lockdown. You know what I mean? Unless you need food or unless you go to the hospital. I get that part. I understand it. But the rest of us, like in the other areas, we're not. Like we're allowed, if we have to go to work, we go to work. Like I, I'm a veteran service officer. I'm in the office every day. You know, and I think it's the guilt. We have to stop looking at it. It's like, what am I doing? I'm not doing enough. Well, maybe you're not doing enough or maybe you're doing too much. Because you can actually be adding to the problem, you know what I mean, if you're not really properly prepared to do that job. So that's well, my two cents on it. Yeah, and do you think maybe guilt can come from because, so right, if you are told you're supposed to do something and you do it and you achieve it, awesome. But when you're not told to do anything and you're making the decisions <laughs> on your own and there's really, you're not like seeing that kind of outcome, we somehow subconsciously get this like icky feeling. Well, because you have lost that lack of identity. Yeah. You lost the connection to the larger picture, you know what I mean? And so it's like, there's the guilt comes from, you don't feel like you're a part of it anymore, so you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And it can be guilt, because you have know, a lot of us that come out, you know, we ended up, we got medical out for PTSD, we got medical out for physical issues, and so it's like, oh, I'm broken. I can't do anything anyway. Right. You know what I mean? And then we put our identity into the trauma. We put our identity into the injury instead of putting our, in, our identity into the healing journey, instead of putting our identity into the process of getting better, you know what I mean, right. or doing something to improve ourselves. It's the... Um, so, yeah. Yeah. It's helpless. The getting to know yourself. What, sorry, Sarah. What were you going to say? It's that helplessness, which um, we're not yeah. accustomed to, being physically and menti mentally capable. 
and um, and things are are our um, DNA pretty much, and we've had to. We just our bodies aren't a factor. It's like where can my mind take me? You know, and um, if you feel yep. held back or trapped or, or in this case helpless, like by doing some by doing nothing, you are doing something. It's just kind of a weird dynamic with, with this particular yeah. scenario but feel, that helpless feeling is like the worst like if you start you know like he was saying with the physical um feeling less physical physically capable chronic pain um when you're a prisoner in your own body the things like that it's like the worst um when you want to help and can't or but we it's like it feels like we know how uh, helping others is like second nature but i mean helping yep. ourselves is where it gets kind of tricky but helping others is just a no-brainer we see the solution through the problem a lot of the time um, with this, that there's so many unknowns, it's escalating um, exponentially every day. You know, it's just sta the standing by is probably very frust is the most frustrating part. You know, oh, the standing by. Mm. Hurry up and wait, right? <laughs> yep, standing by to stand by. I mean, we're we we were trained for this to stand by to stand by. I mean, this is this is our norm. Um, I feel like I'm on air alert or or NJP or a restriction or something, and. I'm, you know, I've been there, I've done that, got the t-shirt, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty prepared for it. You get Fair a scar. Enough. I mean, I get it from the hurry up and wait as a mom, like when I would watch my son, waiting for my son <laughs> to be from, back from deployment, I'm like, okay, they said 2 a.m., so I'm going to get there at like 12.30 when I can, you know, <laughs> in, in the middle of the night, and then at like 1.45, they're like, it's going to be three o'clock. And my son's texting me. We're oh, just sitting God, right yeah, yeah. What's going on? I'm like, what is going on? Worst ever. Um, but uh, Andrew, speak on this for a little bit because Joyce made this statement to me. Being scared is not suffering. And that statement, I was like, everybody needs to know or, or think on being scared is not suffering. There are two separate emotions. There's two separate processes and outcomes of that. What does that like resonate with you? Because it resonated hard and heavy when she said that to me. Well, when uh, <clears throat> when I was um, when I was drinking, I was not scared. I was actually I was I was suffering because I was drinking so much. Um, but I mean, I've, I've learned that it's now it's okay. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to suffer. It's okay to be scared. Um, I know, all, you know, all of us have served. I know we were scared at one point in our time. I know I was scared in 05 and 06 in Ramadi and Fallujah. Uh, Malachias, I know you were like, I mean, you were in the thick of things and you were probably scared pretty much every day. Sarah, same with you. Um, you know, to be scared um, and to, 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 to hold on to it. And to use that for a better purpose is the way – that's what we're trained to do. We're trained to take our, our fear and, and continue on with the mission. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've had to learn a different way of holding on to my – because I was scared. I was scared to, to graduate vet court. I was scared to get away from uh, the structure that veteran court had. Um, but you know what? Um, I overcame it. And with all the tools that they taught me, um, and now I, I embrace being scared. I embrace, you know, it's not going to be that bad. I mean, it, it, it's suffering, but it's, you know what? It's not going to be bad. I know somebody else who suffered a long time ago for us. And you know what? Um, we're all good because of him, because of his sacrifice. And I know you know who I'm talking about, Malachias. Yep. And yep. Joyce. And, and Corey. But, um, I mean, he, he, he was scared, but he didn't show it that much. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's some, we can learn a lot from, from the big guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I get which kind of sense. I want Corey to answer this because Corey, you work with the, you know, the, the older generation, right? right. Like yeah. in the community yeah. now, the fear of dying or the fear of the unknown, right? Like I think being scared and fear, it's that unknown. You don't know. Like Andrew was saying, you didn't know you were scared to graduate because, whoa, like who's going to hold you accountable? Like it's on you, man. Um, so when you get to the end of, end of, you know, the older days when you're, you need help and you might be physically suffering, how does you see that, um, 
Corey, in your world? Because you're helping in the older generation when they can't really help themselves anymore. Yeah, so the, the clients that I've talked to about it, it, what I've gathered is because of what they saw, because I, I deal with a lot of Vietnam veterans, Korea veterans, um, and, and they saw some really, I mean, you listen to their stories and you're like, oh my gosh, how, how? And, and a lot of them, especially the Vietnam era veterans, can't really talk to anybody at the VA about it because it's offic not officially official, you know? It's not, it's redacted, it's, it's not in any of their records. Um, so what, what it seems like to me is that their threshold of being scared was raised so high when they were, um, when they were seeing those things that now basically nothing scares them and they have to find something. Um, and a lot of them have found, um, religion. They found Christianity, they found God because they've said that they're of the mindset that I, I can't be afraid of anything. That's kind of where they are. Um, and that's a generational thing. And that's, a, that's, you know, they never really talked about that with anybody. They weren't really allowed to be afraid of anything. Um, and so that's kind of how they deal with that now. And, and you walk into any of these clients' homes, every single one of them on their coffee table or their kitchen table or whatever, they've got a Bible. And that's kind of how they're dealing with the fear of what's next for them. Um, they have lived arguably the scariest lives of anybody else that that is living right now um Chris. and so they just need something to deal to cope with what is the next unknown and the next unknown for a lot of them is is that fear of dying and so they've they've coped with that um with religion really i feel like that might be a common denominator denominator because when you face death whatever that looks like or it, whether that death is by your own hand whether that um that suffering is things that you've seen or have been done to you it brings you into this this different realm of uh control right where you let go of that control you realize you were so out of control someone else has to be someone else has to be doing this because you are not that powerful to wield this this magic that is going on in this world right right i that is yeah. well and that's the thing is you know i gotta jump in i'm sorry is that you know with what andrew was saying to begin with you it's 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 okay, first of all, we have to make we have to make it very aware. It's okay to not be okay. Okay? It's okay to be sucking. It's okay to be hurting. It's okay to go through all this. But there's a difference in the mentality and of the of the acknowledgement of when you go to war of making peace with your mortality, right? But then when you come home and you make it home, making peace with that mortality when it comes to age is a completely different mens it's a different thought process because now you have life experience that's gone to it. It's not a sudden thing. You're facing it, you're dealing with it, and you're creeping towards it instead of the mentality of, oh, this could happen right now. It could be a split second and I could be dead because, oh, you know, an IED or, you know, of a mortar blast or an RPG or getting shot or whatever. But, you know, you make that kind of like, you're like, well, I mean, this is, I, I signed up for this, I could die. But then when you come home and then you made it home and now you're 70, you're 75, You've got a list of disabilities, you know, a mile long that some the VA have recognized, some they have not recognized. And now it's like, okay, what happens? You know, but we, it, it really starts with acknowledging that it's okay to not be okay. Because when that happens, like that, just, that's a release. Emotionally, yeah. there's a release. Yeah. How much pressure we put on ourselves um, all the time. Um, some I've been thinking about with this, just how much life has slowed down um, sometimes to a halt for some people during this pandemic. And um, it's really a unique opportunity to figure out who we are, who are we without constant distractions, without vicarious living, without sports, and being, without being entertained 24-7. Um, it's really an opportunity to get to know yourself. I think, I don't know if a lot of people know how to keep their own company. So I really think um, as a nation and individually, we're going to learn a lot about um, who we are, who we really are. Are we really happy? Did we like the job we cannot go to today? We, we cannot do these things. And so other things come into play. Um, like I said, so distraction sometimes. Uh, what is happiness and what is distraction? And are they synonymous? Hmm. Um, there are a, I think a lot of questions will be answered in people's heads and hearts during this time. 
Um, so it's, it's just such a weird opportunity and weird situation. But that is something that's I, hopefully happened. Hopefully people take advantage of this. Hopefully they gain some clarity. That's the only time clarity comes with me is when this lack of stimuli, when everything slows to a stop. That's when the clarity comes. And I think a lot of people are going to figure out a lot about themselves um, during this time and about each other during this time. It yeah, is, uh, no, I, I, I totally agree. And it's what, uh, like from a warrior's garden, it's that stillness. It's, um, it's that meditation, right, Malachias? There it is. The, the stillness. I mean, to be, to be quiet. I mean, the Stoics, they talk about it all the time. And I, I know I post this on my Facebook yeah, all the time, whenever I get an email from the Daily Stoic. The big thing is to be still in your own person. And it took me a long time to figure that out. How, how can I be okay with myself and not do anything and meditate? And I, I heard Malachi's talk at one of our Marine Corps League meetings when, when I first actually met him. And I read his book and it's just, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to plug you right now, Malachi's. Get a Warrior's Garden. Read it. Um, cover to cover. All right. It explains Let it happen, a lot. Malachi's. Let it happen. That's right. <laughs> See, he's getting embarrassed. Look, he's turning red. Yeah. <laughs> it's Red Friday. It's Red Friday. It's Red Friday. <laughs> but I just think the perspective we have to gain out of this is immeasurable, really, I think. It, sure. it, I hope it is. And I hope that more people than not take this opportunity to realize those things. You know, in... I always say, you know somebody, when you're arguing with them, you know their real personality. When there's tragedy, you really know who you are deep down. And letting yep. yourself sit in that is good. And that is where I want to end it because we're coming up to part one ending. We're going to get to the other things, which, which I'm going to add to going coming up in part two when we go talk about shifting from trauma to healing. A big part of that, I think, is going to be being okay with being still with yourself because that is a scary place to be a lot of yep. times sometimes and it's all about perception it's all about perception it's how you look at it and what you're looking at it's what you choose to allow yourself to focus on because if you allow yourself to focus on the negative that's what you're going to fill your mind with and what you fill your mind with is what's going to come out of your mouth and it's what you're going to act out on other people so if you move the perspective from i hurt i suck i broke you know what I mean? To I'm healing, I'm working, I'm trying, right? I'm growing. At that point, now you're gonna be taking those same things out of your mind, and you're gonna be investing that into other people instead of invest. Because in, I tell, uh, especially like with, and I think Andrew and I've had this talk to you where you know if I'm broken right now, the worst thing I can do is try to help someone because I'm gonna be giving them a broken product and I'm gonna teach them to give brokenness to other people. So, so there's times where I have to withdraw and I have to focus on me. I need to do self care, right? And, if I, and once that's ready, now I'm giving a perfected, not perfect, but perfected prog uh, piece of something to somebody and they're gonna be able to give that to others. Instead of me giving them brokenness, I'm giving them hope. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. Oh, oh. Malachi is oh, beautiful. Sorry. Just like AA, if you uh, if you can't heal your, you can't heal you can't heal anybody until you heal yourself. And and Malachi, you, that's exactly what that AA teaches the same thing. I mean, you can't you can't go out and, and, and fix another alcoholic without fixing yourself. Okay. I mean, if yep. you are you know uh, like me, a grateful recovering alcoholic. So yeah, no, Malachi, that's that's beautiful to hear that. It's a good. So if anybody that is out there, if you have a question or a comment or you want to ask anything, you got to unmute yourself before you talk because you are muted. Um, and now's the opportunity. If you think of something in the future, when I post this recording, you can always write it in the comments and then they'll address it, whoever you wrote it to or just in general in the comments or on the other stuff. But um, I, I, I feel very like in charge at that moment <laughs> you are you're our battalion commander danny my dog you know and they like all the kids are gone 
Um, but if no one has any questions or, or comments or anything like that, I want to thank everyone for listening. I want to thank everybody in the future that is hearing this. And I will let you know when part two is. And Corey and Malachias and Sarah and Andrew, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and with us. It's, 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 <laughs> Namaste at home. Namaste at home. <laughs> you guys are awesome, and we all hope you join our table the next time. You can Thanks, on. Danny. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Corey. Yeah. Good honor. Bye. Thanks for having us. <laughs>